I think we're all aware of this, but it bears repeating. DOA waifu preferences have started many bar fights and flame wars throughout the world, but this video will settle all that. Momiji is one of the greatest characters of all time in general, and factually, the best one to ever come out of Koei Tecmo specifically. I said what I said. <laughs> Thanks to Jonathan down at the Flophouse VIP Patreon for his infinite patience with me in making this video. What started as a throwaway joke in the Ninja Gaiden 3 What Happened episode... Yeah, there's Kasumi and Ayane, I guess, but more importantly than that, Momiji. Don't worry, Momiji. Your Momiji is all that Momiji's. Then blossomed into me asking myself, wait, why do I love Momiji so much when there are dozens of similar characters in the grander DOA-verse? Well, she does have a lot to offer. Her long, raven hair, fluid combat style, sense of duty and honor, and you know, the butt flaps. But one thing is for absolutely certain though, she's the total package. Wow, take a look at that! Momiji, or Autumn Leaves, is employed as a dragon shrine maiden down at the community center of Ryu Hayabusa's Dragon Village and was trained at an early age to do such. Speaking of age, she is 21 years old, which makes her a desecrated old granny by most dead or alive standards. She, along with her older sister, were tasked with guarding the dragon jewels, which no doubt had something important to do with dragons. This sisterly bond was tragically shattered during something called the Dark Dragon Blade Incident, which saw a number of maidens getting murked, including Momiji's sister. During this fateful day, Momiji herself just happened to be away on an errand outside of the village and was devastated when she returned home and found that the community center was now a smoking crater. Vowing to never let this happen again, she started to train in the ninja combat arts under Ryu Hayabusa himself so she could better defend the village if the need would ever arise and fortunately, she was a quick learner. Momiji became adept with a number of weapons, but developed a particular affinity for the spear. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, the Heavenly Dragon Naganada! So, while that's all pretty standard in terms of backstory for a ninja slash fighting game character, what's her personal vibe, her attitude? While she's generally very polite, gentle, caring, and respectful, which was no doubt a trait honed by the codes and traditions of Dragon Shrine Maidenness. She lives to protect her home and is even seen as a big sister by the local children, making sure they stay out of trouble and giving them important life advice like staying the fuck away from crypto. Seriously though, since she lives in the isolated mountainous regions of Japan, Momiji is admittedly unfamiliar with some aspects of the modern world, including things like personal hygiene. She has no idea what soaps and lotions are for, she's never visited a Bath and Body Works, as evidenced by some dialogue in the DOA Extreme Games, so suffice to say, she nasty! Personally, why I think I dig her attitude so much is that she's got this healthy balance of a bunch of different DOA personality types. Equal parts tough, demure, and serious, but also she has a certain innocence about her. Sure, she's not as rambunctious or as extra as Tina, but she's not as fragile or ooh-woo as some others. So, with the mini history lesson out of the way, let's talk about her actual in-game appearances, because what's really shocking to me is just how far Momiji Mania has spread. She's been in stuff I was only recently made aware of. Oh god, I'm a fake Momiji simp. Her big debut started with the severely underrated Ninja Gaiden Dragon Sword for the Nintendo DS. Ah, see what they, what they did there. <laughs> and while she's integral to the plot, it is through the a rather tired Princess Peach trope, needing constant rescue by Hayabusa. So while she's not an active participant in the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay, you can play through the game in Kuno Ichi mode, which then allows Momiji to frantically scribble across the screen to victory. Now, before any of you uh actually me, yes. 
technically the female ninja you play in this mode is named Rin, even though she uses Momiji's exact model. Team Ninja didn't have enough time to rewrite the story to account for this bonus mode, hence why they decided to just rename the female ninja, cause it would make no sense for Momiji to be rescuing Momiji. Regardless, Kunoichi mode is just a what-if scenario and isn't really canon anyway, so for all intents and purposes, nah, get the fuck out, Rin. This is a Momiji moment here. Now, if some of you are only passingly familiar with the character, you might be taken aback by her original default dragon sword design, as it's incredibly pared back and more realistic compared to every other female design to have ever come out of Team Ninja. There's probably a multitude of reasons for this, but I have to assume a big one was being a Nintendo DS exclusive circa 2008. Honestly though, I love this design. It's a bit mysterious and unique while retaining some classic ninja sensibilities. Although, yeah, maybe it's it's not all that stealthy. It's more like Arctic Strike Momiji with snow slash action. Kapow! She was then next added into Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2. If anyone's forgotten, allow me to remind you, the Sigma series was comprised of two PS3 special editions of the Xbox originals that Itagaki personally hated and went actively shit on his own team for making, even though they were tasked by their publisher to do such. What a cool guy! Anyway, Momiji and two other characters that aren't important were all given their own exclusive chapter to battle through, and it's here where her overall playstyle and moveset were fleshed out. She was given multiple costumes, voiced cutscenes, and impresses with her smoking sick Naganata stylings. It is a pretty basic mission and can be completed in like 15 minutes, but Sigma 2 nonetheless is still a very important milestone in Momijiology. Next up is the famously rushed Ninja Gaiden 3. How rushed? This rushed! Anyway, while our favorite curvy ninja briefly appears in the story, she wasn't playable in any form, which was a massive disrespectful insult to the whole world at large. Fortunately, this affront to humanity was eventually corrected with Razor's Edge, which saw Momiji being added into the Ninja Trials mode. She could also be used throughout the story campaign via the chapter select function, that is once you downloaded her DLC pack onto the Wii U. She then became a basic unlock a year later in the 360 and PS3 ports, but for whatever reason, she only became available once you've cleared Chapter 5. She was also blessed with a few more costumes this time around, although one or two from Sigma didn't make the cut. Finally, her combat style was further refined, or downgraded, depending on how you feel about NG3 slash Razor's Edge in general. Now, if you want to know where Momiji Mania was in 2013, well, it was breaking all records across the globe. She was added into Dead or Alive 5 Ultimate, where she became a mainstay, nay, a cornerstone of the franchise from then on out. This also meant that going from a character action game to a 3D fighter, her moveset would need to be adjusted, and obviously her repertoire of weaponry was banned, but she was still allowed to keep her most deadly weapons of all. If you want to throw down in fisticuffs, fine. I've got Jack Johnson and Tom O'Leary waiting for you, right here. DOA 5 Momiji's a beast. She's fast, decently powerful, and has plenty of mobility options, including a lot of air control, making her a solid choice for beginners and experts alike, placing her near the top of most tier lists. As she fucking should be. It also, you know, doesn't hurt that she looks absolutely stunning in Dead or Alive 5's more realistic visual style. Her DOA career continued into the arcade version of 5, which I didn't even know existed, and extended into last round as well, which also meant that Momiji got to indulge in the most decadent and hedonistic pleasure that the Dead or Alive series has to offer, way too many costumes. Her various get-ups from the Ninja Gaiden series were added, along with whatever kink you're into. School uniforms, hot teachers, swimsuits. If you need to rub one out, Team Ninja made sure to provide something that'll get you there. Now, a lot has been said about Dead or Alive 6, and a lot will be said in the future, but I do find it fascinating that at launch, its sales plummeted compared to DOA 5. 
Now, just as it so happens, Momiji was not present in that launch roster. Coincidence? I think not. She was eventually added to the game some seven months later, but by then, even Momiji's ravishing looks, acrobatic moves, and endearing personality couldn't save it. When asked why Momiji wasn't included initially, but was in DOA 5, 6 director Yohei Shimbori stated that because she originated in Ninja Gaiden, she wasn't a priority, as they wanted to keep the roster focused on original DOA characters. <laughs> Bullshit! <laughs> So, with her DOA career done and dusted, it's time for the part of the video that's going to flirt with demonetization. The Dead or Alive Extreme spin-off series went Momiji-less for its first two entries, so they're barely worth playing. She eventually bounced into 2016's Extreme 3, landing in the creepy paradise that is Zack Island. Now, much like her standing in the mainline DOA roster, Momiji is one of the most dependable and solid choices to go with. On any given day vacationing on the island, she remains happy, cheerful, and friendly no matter what, and makes a great partner for any splashy summer activity that might tickle your fancy. She also gets along with every other girl on the island, which means she has no real enemies, so she's like the sexy capybara of the game. As for why an honorable dragon shrine ninja maiden who lives in the mountains would drop everything for a perverted summer vacation, well, she apparently received an invite from Hayabusa himself, which is very unlike him. So while initially unsure of this crazy proposal, she figured if her master invited her, it must be important. Oh no! It turns out Hayabusa was never there at all. It was all a ruse by Zack. It's the ultimate swerve! Eh, whatever. I, I don't really care what the reason is to get her into a bikini and participate in butt battles. I'll buy whatever you're selling. I ain't hard to please in this respect. Her glistening summer debut then carried over into DOA Extreme 3, Venus Vacation. I, I couldn't tell you what the differences are between this version and the last, but I imagine they're largely the same. It doesn't end there though, because Momiji's popularity also extended into mashing the X button a thousand times. She became a quest-giving NPC in Dynasty Warriors Strike Force. Is that some type of MMA Muso hybrid? What is this? Uh, if you complete all the missions Momiji gives you, you gain her spear, sorry, Heavenly Dragon Naganata as a playable weapon which comes complete with a few of her special attacks from Sigma, so, you know, at least that's something. Finally, she was thrust into a playable role in the Wii U special edition of Warriors Orochi 3, subtitled Hyper, which has to be one of the most obscure inclusions ever. Like, who played the Wii U special edition of a Musou game? That's gotta be rare. Oh wait, that re-release was then re-re-re-released on the PS4 and other formats as Warriors Orochi 3 Ultimate, so I guess non-Wii U owners, i.e. most people, got to get in on the fun. Full disclosure though, I haven't had a chance to play as her in this particular game yet because, well, I don't really do the historical musos unless you count Fist of the North Star as historical, which, you know, I do. Oof, so, DOA 6 was the last game chronologically she was included in, which isn't surprising because aside from Neo and New Metal the game, bullshit. Team Ninja hasn't really done all that much, but I have to imagine this stunning, stealthy starlet will return to steal the show in whatever game she pops up in next. Her appeal is absolutely a combination of factors. Her unique weapon style, her costumes, which revolve around her origins as a dragon shrine maiden, and her devotion to that position. She also has that fish out of water appeal, like imagine her walking down the streets of Akihabara and having no idea what all this otaku shit is. And yes, as far as video game characters go, she's a stone cold supersonic babe. One of Tecmo's best. Wait, no, she is the best. Thanks again to Jonathan for getting me to do this video. Sorry again for the extreme delay. And hell, down in the comments below, let me know if there's any other characters in the wider video game world you'd like me to profile in the future. And I'm just saying.